Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into The Advantage by Patrick M. Lencioni, a compelling exploration into the foundational principles of building a healthy organization. Lencioni, a renowned expert in organizational health and executive team development, uncovers the secrets to aligning team members towards common objectives, thereby unlocking the full potential of an organization. Unlike their counterparts, healthy organizations spend less time in internal conflicts and more on achieving success. As the founder and president of The Table Group, a management consulting firm, Patrick Lencioni brings to this book a wealth of experience and insight. With over three million copies of his books sold worldwide, including the best-selling The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, Lencioni establishes himself as a leading voice on building strong, unified teams. The Advantage is not just another business book. It's a blueprint for anyone aspiring to foster an environment where success is not just possible, but inevitable. This episode is a must-listen for leadership team members across all types of organizations, human resources professionals, and consultants specializing in leadership, organizational learning, and team building. Join us as we uncover the strategies that make The Advantage a vital resource for anyone serious about elevating their organization's performance. The Advantage. Why organizational health trumps everything else in business. Introduction. Unlock the secret to a thriving company. Embrace organizational health. Imagine walking into a workplace where the energy is tangible, where employees are engaged, collaboration is the norm, and creativity flourishes. This isn't a scene from a utopian novel. It's a vivid description of a healthy organization. Yet, many leaders continue to overlook the vitality of their company, focusing instead on numbers and neglecting the very backbone that sustains long-term success organizational health. Why do so many leaders turn a blind eye to something so critical? It's a paradox that has baffled many, but understanding and addressing it could be what sets your company apart in the competitive market. As it turns out, admittance of mistakes among leadership teams is not a sign of weakness, but of strength. A leader who can openly say, I made a mistake, paves the way for transparency, trust, and genuine teamwork. But wait, There's more to deciphering the code of a thriving company. Let's talk about meetings, often dreaded and derided as productivity black holes. Contrary to popular belief, meetings are not the enemy. In fact, they are indispensable in the bloodstream of healthy organizations. The secret lies not in reducing them, but in transforming them into platforms of meaningful exchange, decision-making, and alignment. Still, Embracing this new meeting paradigm is only part of the equation. The strategic nourishment of your organization's health extends beyond the confines of the office and daily routines. Picture this, a quarterly retreat where the executive team steps back from the daily grind to reflect, strategize, and tackle the company's most challenging hurdles. These retreats are not mere getaways. They're crucibles for strengthening leadership, fostering unity, and crystallizing the direction of the company. By now, it should be clear that cultivating a healthy organization is non-negotiable for those aiming for the pinnacle of success. It's about recognizing and rectifying overlooked aspects, redefining the role of meetings, and committing to continuous strategic reflection. Join the ranks of thriving companies by placing organizational health at the core of your leadership strategy. After all, in the race of endurance, only the healthy organizations cross the finish line, victorious and celebrated. Part 1. The Dual Pillars of Success, Smart Strategies and Organizational Health The puzzle of what makes an organization not just survive but truly thrive has captivated the minds of business leaders for ages. At the heart of a successful organization, two fundamental elements must coexist being smart, and being healthy. While the concept of being smart, mastering the essentials of strategy, marketing, finance, and technology, often steals the limelight, 
It's the notion of organizational health that truly determines the longevity and robustness of a company's success. Why does organizational health hold such a pivotal role, you might wonder? Well, let's delve a bit deeper into the nuances that distinguish thriving ecosystems within companies from those that falter despite showcasing brilliant minds at the helm. At its core, a healthy organization is one where high morale and productivity reign supreme, where conflicts and confusion are at their nadir, and where the turnover of dismayed employees is exceptionally low. This vibrant environment doesn't just happen by chance. It's cultivated by leaders who are ready and willing to acknowledge their own imperfections, open channels for advice and learning, and lead by example in rectifying their missteps. This culture of openness and adaptability gives healthy organizations a unique leverage, the ability to become smarter over time through collective learning and collaboration. Drawing a parallel to family dynamics can shed light on this principle even further. Consider the notion of a nurturing family environment where discipline is balanced with affection and quality time, empowering children to navigate challenges with resilience. Contrast this with a family plagued by dysfunction, where, regardless of intelligence, individuals struggle to find their footing. The parallel to organizations is stark, highlighting that even the brightest leaders can falter in an environment stifled by politics, misalignment, and inconsistency. Interestingly, the myth that only smart leaders can steer organizations to success is debunked when we examine the landscape of businesses led by individuals who might be considered average in conventional metrics. Yet these leaders, through fostering a culture of health within their organizations, often make decisions that outshine those made in the conference rooms of their so-called smarter competitors. This phenomenon underscores that intelligence alone, devoid of a healthy organizational backdrop, often leads to self-sabotage. The repercussions of neglecting organizational health are tangible, with the squander of resources, time, and talent manifesting in the dwindling bottom lines and the exodus of disenchanted employees and customers alike. The competitive advantage thus unequivocally swings in favor of those who invest in nurturing the health of their organization a strategy that not only enhances financial outcomes, but also elevates employee contentment. However, the question remains, in the face of its undeniable benefits, why do leaders often sideline the pursuit of organizational health? Unpacking this quandary reveals a pathway to transforming workplaces into arenas of flourishing success and unrivaled vitality. Part 2. Breaking Free from Biases the path to organizational health. Leadership, in its essence, involves navigating complexities and making decisions that propel an organization forward. However, when it comes to cultivating organizational health, many leaders find themselves entangled in biases that hinder progress. This journey requires unraveling the sophistication bias, the adrenaline bias, and the quantification bias, each of which plays a pivotal role in the relative neglect of organizational well-being. The sophistication bias is the first hurdle to cross. Here, the simplicity of fostering organizational health seems almost counterintuitive to leaders who have been conditioned to believe that only complex strategies yield significant results. The notion that straightforward principles like discipline, persistence, and courage can transform an organization's health is often dismissed. This bias veils the truth that sometimes the most impactful actions are grounded in what seems deceptively simple. Next, the adrenaline bias captures those leaders who thrive on the rush of addressing immediate crises. The allure of tackling what's urgent over what's critically important often leaves foundational elements like organizational health in the sidelines. These leaders miss out on the wisdom of going slow to ultimately go fast overlooking the sustainable gains that nurturing a healthy environment offers. Then comes the quantification bias, where the abstract nature of organizational health's benefits becomes a stumbling block, because it's challenging to measure the direct financial impact of improved morale or interdepartmental relationships. Some leaders hesitate to invest time and resources into these areas. 
this bias prioritizes tangible outcomes over the subtle yet profound effects that organizational health can yield. Moreover, the predisposition of leaders to seek comfort in the concrete, in data and measurable outcomes, further compounds these biases. The discomfort with delving into the subjective, often messy, aspects of building a cohesive, healthy work culture leads many to shy away from addressing it head on. Despite these challenges, recognizing and overcoming these biases opens up a realm of opportunity. It allows leaders to see beyond the immediate tangible benefits and appreciate the long-term competitive advantage that a healthy organization delivers. No longer confined by a touchy-feely stigma, organizational health emerges as a formidable strategy for success. Understanding the barriers is the first step. Now, let's explore actionable strategies to foster an environment where organizational health isn't just an aspiration, but a reality. In doing so, leaders unlock the potential to elevate their companies to new heights, rivaled by few and admired by many. Part 3. Unity at the Top. Crafting a Leadership Team that Champions Organizational Health. The bedrock of any successful company lies not in its strategic plans or market dominance, but in the strength of its leadership and the harmony within its ranks. The essence of any organization's health and cohesion stems from a fundamental truth. Businesses are intrinsically about people and the quality of their interactions. Therefore, a company's aspirations for greatness are invariably tethered to the functionality and unity of its leadership team. But what is the recipe for forging such a powerhouse executive team? It begins with recognizing that true teamwork transcends mere collaboration. It's about a shared vision and a common goal, much like a symphony orchestra where every note played is pivotal to the harmony of the piece. A pivotal aspect of constructing a formidable leadership team lies in adhering to the principle of a real team. This concept envisions a group of individuals united by a shared objective each member fully invested in the collective triumph. Imagine a basketball team where every pass, every defense, and every score is a step towards a common victory. Such should be the spirit of an executive team. For this transformation to occur, a few essential strategies must be employed. Foremost is keeping the team compact, ideally consisting of 3 to 12 members. This tight-knit structure fosters an environment where ideas and concerns can be shared freely and efficiently, enabling swift decision-making and problem-solving. Next, cultivating a sense of collective responsibility is non-negotiable. This goes beyond mere agreement on paper. It demands tangible and intangible sacrifices from every team member. It means that sometimes leaders might need to allocate resources to another department or put in extra hours, all for the greater good of the company. Such commitments ensure that no one is left carrying the weight alone and that every contribution is towards a unified objective. Lastly, and perhaps most crucially, aligning everyone on the same goal is vital. A basketball team falters when a player prioritizes personal accolades over team success. Similarly, an organization cannot thrive if its leaders are pulling in different directions, prioritizing departmental success over the company's overarching goals. An effective method to foster this unity of purpose is tying a portion of the leadership team's compensation to the attainment of shared objectives, reinforcing the idea that individual success is inherently linked to the collective triumph. In essence, the journey to an organization's health and cohesion is paved by the strength and unity of its leadership. By embodying the principles of real teamwork, small size, collective responsibility, and a unified goal, executive teams can become the driving force behind a thriving, cohesive organization. This is not merely a strategy, but a commitment to excellence that resonates through every level of the company, laying the foundation for a culture of success and well being. Part 4. The Five Pillars of a Cohesive Leadership Team The secret source to creating a powerhouse team, be it in sports, music, or the boardroom, lies in its cohesion. 
specifically for leadership teams aiming to steer their organization to new heights. Embracing five core behavioral principles is non-negotiable. These principles act as the North Star, guiding teams in fostering an environment where collective success is not just an aspiration, but an attainable reality. The journey begins with trust. And not just any kind of trust, but vulnerability-based trust. This is the kind of trust that emerges when team members can openly admit their weaknesses, ask for help, and acknowledge when someone else has a better idea. It is a trust that allows for sentences like, I need help, or I'm sorry, to be said without fear of judgment. This kind of transparency not only strengthens bonds among team members, but also streamlines processes, saving precious time and energy that would otherwise be wasted on maintaining facades. If trust is the foundation, then constructive conflict is the framework upon which ideas can be challenged and refined. Engaging in open, healthy debates around ideas is a sign of a team's strength, not its weakness. It's a critical process in which diverse perspectives are not just welcomed, but necessary for innovative problem solving. The key is to view these conflicts as opportunities for growth rather than threats to harmony. Avoiding these necessary confrontations out of fear only leads to unresolved issues and tension that could jeopardize future decisions. Commitment to decisions is the third pillar, which hinges on every team member feeling heard and understanding the reasoning behind collective choices. Without this full bodied buy in, decisions, no matter how strategic, are rendered ineffective. This commitment paves the way for the fourth principle, accountability. When each person on the team holds not only themselves but each other accountable for the outcomes of those decisions, it solidifies a collective responsibility towards shared goals. Finally, the true measure of a team's effectiveness is its results orientation. Aligning around a singular goal, such as a soccer team's collective drive to win, regardless of individual performance metric, ensures that all efforts are geared towards achieving real, tangible outcomes. This means that the success of any one team member is intrinsically tied to the success of the team as a whole. Therefore, it's vital that every action taken is a step towards the collective victory, not just individual achievements. These five principles, trust, constructive conflict, commitment, accountability, and a focus on results, are the building blocks of a cohesive and high-performing leadership team. When effectively implemented, they create a robust foundation that propels teams towards their goals, ensuring not just the success of their projects, but the holistic success of the organization. Part 5. Forging Unbreakable Bonds, Leadership Teams, and the Power of Six Key Questions. In the ancient world, the phalanxes of Greece were renowned for their unwavering unity and strength, becoming a symbol of collective power. In much the same way, a leadership team's effectiveness is directly proportional to its level of alignment a concept that remains as relevant today as it was on the battlefields of yesteryear. Achieving this pinnacle of alignment requires delving into the fundamental questions that define the team's purpose, values, and objectives. By seeking answers to six pivotal questions, leadership teams can fortify their cohesion and steer their organization towards triumph. So what are these questions that wield such transformative potential? The journey of introspection begins with a seemingly simple inquiry. Why do we exist? This foundational question probes the very essence of the organization's purpose, prompting leaders to clarify the overarching aspiration that unites their efforts. Understanding the core reason for the company's existence is crucial, as it provides a beacon for all employees to follow, ensuring everyone is rowing in the same direction towards a shared horizon. Next, the team must contemplate, how do we behave? This critical question aims to define the character and values of the company. Establishing clear, behavior-guiding principles allows team members to make decisions and take actions aligned with the organization's ethos, fostering a culture of autonomy and integrity without the need for micromanagement. 
The inquiry then evolves to what do we do and how will we succeed? These questions delve into the practicalities of the business, clarifying not only the means of generating profit, but also the strategic pathways to achieving success. It's here that potential discrepancies in understanding and approach can be identified and rectified, ensuring a unified front in both purpose and execution. Finally, the team tackles the questions of prioritization and responsibility. What is most important right now? And who must do what? Focusing on a singular overarching priority enables the team to channel the organization's energies towards achieving a significant milestone, while clearly delineating roles ensures that every critical facet is attended to by the most capable hands. By collectively finding answers to these six questions, a leadership team can elevate its level of cohesion to new heights, transforming from a group of individuals into a singular formidable force. This process of alignment not only empowers teams to act decisively and effectively, but also lays the groundwork for a culture of collaboration and success that permeates the entire organization. Part six, embracing the role of chief reminding officers, the key to ensuring lasting engagement. In the intricate dance of corporate leadership, a critical role often goes unspoken, that of the chief reminding officer. Once a leadership team has navigated the intricate process of aligning on the fundamental questions that define their organization's purpose, values, strategy, and priorities, their job is only half done. The next critical step is to ensure these insights are not just communicated, but deeply ingrained across the entire organization. In essence, leaders must become relentless in reminding their teams of the core principles that drive their collective efforts. This notion of overcommunication is vital because, in the bustling environment of any company, messages can easily get lost in the noise. People naturally harbor skepticism towards new information, especially in the absence of reinforcement. Thus, when leaders consistently reiterate the company's purpose, values, strategy, and priorities, they aren't just sharing information. They're weaving these elements into the fabric of the organization's culture. Consistency in messaging is perceived not as redundancy, but as a testament to a leader's dedication and authenticity. For many leaders, embracing repetition challenges the conventional wisdom that prizes originality and fears the monotony of redundancy. Yet, it's this very repetition that ensures the messages resonate allowing employees to internalize and reflect them in their daily tasks and decision-making. This relentless reminding fosters a deep understanding and alignment throughout the company, ensuring that everyone moves in unison towards the set goals. Effective communication is not limited to the relationship between leadership and the wider organization, but is equally crucial within the leadership team itself. This internal alignment is imperative to present a united front and prevent any confusion when cascading messages down the company ranks. A common pitfall occurs when decisions made in leadership conclave are communicated without ensuring a shared understanding amongst the executives themselves, leading to situations of confusion and contention, as seen in the case of an unexpected hiring freeze that caught several department heads off guard. Such misunderstandings not only sow seeds of discord, but also undermine the intended message's integrity and the leadership's credibility. A simple, unified reiteration at the end of crucial meetings about what is to be communicated company-wide can preempt confusion and ensure a cohesive message is delivered. In conclusion, the role of leaders as chief reminding officers is paramount in cementing the clear understanding and embracement of the organization's core purpose, values, and strategies. This continuous cycle of communication and reinforcement ensures that the entire team is not just aware but fully engaged and aligned in pushing forward the organization's objectives. Through this relentless dedication to overcommunication, leaders can truly galvanize their teams, fostering an environment where the company's foundational principles are lived out daily. Part 7. Streamlining Success – 
aligning human systems with core organizational values. In the intricate ecosystem of a company, employees stand as the most valuable asset, the heartbeat that powers every success and navigates every challenge. It's the human systems within an organization, the constellation of processes, from hiring to performance management, from training to compensation, that nurture or negate this vital force. For leaders aiming to catalyze a culture of excellence and alignment, ensuring these human systems are a direct reflection of the organization's core values and objectives is non-negotiable. But how do leaders ensure that these systems do not merely exist but actively enhance the unique culture of their organization? It starts with clarity, a deep understanding of the organization's purpose, behaviors, and goals as articulated through answers to six pivotal questions. With these insights in hand, leaders are equipped to design human systems that are not only simple, but supremely focused on reinforcing the behaviors that are prized within their organization. Consider the journey of an employee through the organization, a logical life cycle that spans from recruitment to potentially parting ways. Each phase of this cycle offers a strategic opportunity to instill and reinforce the desired cultural blueprint. From the outset, the recruitment process should be a beacon, attracting individuals whose values align with those of the company. But it doesn't stop there. As new hires are onboarded, their orientation period is critical for setting expectations and guiding them onto the path that aligns with corporate values and objectives. As employees evolve within the company, performance management becomes a tool not just for assessment, but for coaching, offering direction, encouragement, and consistent feedback. This process ensures that employees are not only aware of how they're performing, but deeply understand the why behind their efforts and how it ties back to the bigger picture. In the realm of compensation and rewards, the message must be clear. The organization values contributions that advance its core objectives, incentivizing behaviors that align with its ethos. Yet, even in the best laid plans, there will be moments of misalignment. In such instances, the initial step should always be to examine the management and support structures surrounding the employee, providing them with the resources and guidance needed to realign. However, Should it become evident that an individual's values diverge significantly from those of the organization, parting ways becomes a necessary, albeit challenging, course of action, a move that, while difficult, reaffirms the company's commitment to its core principles to all members. As we venture further into discussions on organizational health, the role of meetings, often maligned yet crucial for fostering alignment and cohesion, will come into sharper focus. Meetings, when designed and conducted in a manner that mirrors the organization's core values, become another vital cog in the machinery of a healthy corporate culture, driving home the importance of every individual and process in achieving collective success. Part eight, meetings, the heartbeat of a healthy organization. In an intriguing twist of corporate perception, leadership meetings, often dismissed by many as monotonous and fruitless endeavors, emerge as the linchpin of organizational health. Within the confines of these gatherings lies the potential for either fostering a culture of synergy and clarity or unwittingly planting the seeds of dysfunction. It's here, at the crossroads of conversation and decision-making, that the true essence of an organization's values, strategies, and communal ethos is both cultivated and manifested. Meetings serve as a dynamic arena where the alignment of goals, the clarity of vision, and the robustness of communication converge. The significance of these interactions cannot be overstated. They are quintessential to solidifying a foundation of cohesion and ensuring a unified march towards organizational objectives. To harness the full potential of leadership team meetings, a methodical approach is essential. Meetings should be a constant fixture allowing ample space for the in-depth exploration of each critical issue and the articulation of actionable steps, ensuring a shared understanding across the board. Despite their undeniable importance, leadership meetings frequently fall prey to perceptions of inefficacy, 
a sentiment stemming not from their inherent nature, but from their execution. A common pitfall is the conglomerate approach, lumping all discussable matters into a singular meeting in the name of efficiency. This strategy, however, often backfires, diluting focus and preventing any single issue from receiving the attention it rightfully deserves. The human brain, with its finite capacity for processing, struggles to navigate through a thicket of varied concerns in one sitting, leading to a cycle of deferral and unresolved matters. Take, for example, the experiences of a large corporation that convened bi-weekly to sift through a pile of accumulated issues. Overwhelmed by the diversity and volume of topics, the leadership routinely found itself entrapped in a cycle of deferment, addressing only the most pressing fires and neglecting strategic foresight. The resulting atmosphere was one of reactivity rather than proactive leadership, undermining morale and eroding the team's strategic orientation. The remedy to this challenge lies in a simple yet profound restructuring of the meeting framework. To ensure effectiveness and maintain strategic focus, leadership teams must embrace a variety of meeting formats, each tailored to different types of concerns. Diversifying the meeting landscape allows for a more nuanced approach to issue resolution, enabling teams to tackle challenges with the attention and depth they warrant. As we delve deeper into the anatomy of successful meetings, the subsequent discussion will illuminate the strategic distribution of meeting types as a critical lever for enhancing decision-making, fostering a culture of engagement, and propelling organizations towards their envisioned futures. Part 9. Mastering the Art of Meetings. A Blueprint for Effective Leadership Communication. Understanding the multifaceted nature of leadership challenges necessitates a strategic approach to meetings. As we've established, addressing a myriad of concerns within a single session often leads to inefficiency and frustration. The solution? A structured variety of meetings, each designed for a specific purpose and depth of discussion. By differentiating meetings into daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly gatherings, organizations can streamline communication, ensuring that each issue receives the attention it merits. At the base of this structure are the daily check-in meetings. Imagine starting each day with a brief 10-minute huddle where team members swiftly exchange essential updates and coordinate their efforts. This practice eliminates the inefficiency of seeking individual updates, saving hours that would otherwise be lost in back and forth communications. Following closely are the weekly tactical staff meetings, the engine room of organizational activity. Surprisingly, these sessions thrive without a predefined agenda. Instead, participants highlight their immediate concerns and priorities, allowing the group to collectively decide on the focal points for discussion. This dynamic approach ensures that discussions are not only timely, but also aligned with the organization's immediate needs. For issues requiring deeper deliberation, those strategic challenges with long-term implications, monthly meetings provide the necessary breathing space. These sessions are dedicated to dissecting complex problems, from product flaws to looming competitive threats, allowing for a comprehensive exploration that tactical meetings simply cannot accommodate. The quarterly off-site review stands as a strategic retreat, offering leaders a chance to step back and evaluate their business with fresh eyes. This is the time for a thorough review of strategic objectives, performance appraisals, environmental scanning for trends, and competitive analysis. Such meetings are invaluable for recalibrating the organization's course and fostering strategic foresight. However, the efficacy of these varied meetings hinges on clarity and communication. With the exception of daily check-ins, each meeting should conclude with a consensus on decisions made and a clear plan for communicating those decisions across the organization. This final step is crucial for maintaining alignment and ensuring that the entire organization moves forward in unison. This structured approach to meetings, from daily check-ins to quarterly strategic retreats, is not just about efficient communication. 
It's a testament to the belief that when leaders thoughtfully orchestrate these interactions, they pave the way for a more cohesive, responsive, and ultimately successful organization. Part 10, the cornerstone of organizational health, leadership and team synergy. The journey towards nurturing a healthy organization is intrinsically linked to the commitment and dynamism of its leaders. Leadership is not just about setting strategic directions or making high-stakes decisions. It's fundamentally about embodying the principles and behaviors that define organizational health. This commitment cannot be outsourced or delegated. The leader's role is paramount, serving as the beacon that guides the entire organization towards a culture of openness, trust, and alignment. Leaders are tasked with more than just administrative oversight. They need to be the vanguard of the organizational values they wish to instill. This proactive leadership involves being the first to address and navigate through challenging tasks, whether it's showing vulnerability, sparking constructive conflict, or addressing misaligned behaviors head on. These actions set a powerful precedent, establishing a culture where honesty, courage, and accountability are not just encouraged, but expected. To amplify these efforts, leaders must nurture a similarly committed leadership team around them. This involves a dedicated, two-pronged approach. Initially, team cohesion and clarity must be fostered through an intensive two-day off-site session, focused on building unity and aligning on the organization's core objectives. Here, away from the distractions of day-to-day operations, the leadership team can deeply engage with each other laying the groundwork for a unified front. Following this, the development of a playbook serves as a strategic artifact, a tangible expression of the leadership team's collective commitments and the practicalities of their implementation. This living document outlines answers to the six pivotal questions that guide organizational health, clearly delineating roles, responsibilities, and how team members will collaboratively drive towards shared goals. However, the task of building and maintaining a healthy organization is not a finite project. It is a continuous, evolving effort, much like nurturing a healthy marriage. It demands sustained attention, relentless effort, and a willingness to address and adapt to new challenges as they arise. Effective communication, therefore, becomes a linchpin in this process, ensuring that critical behaviors and values are consistently reinforced across all levels of the organization. The true hallmark of successful leadership within healthy organizations lies in their persistent dedication to this journey. Leaders who invest in the health of their organization not only witness, but also come to cherish the profound impact of their efforts. A testament to the transformative power of leadership that is deeply engaged in fostering a culture of health, openness, and unified purpose. Final summary. In today's fiercely competitive landscape, the distinction between a thriving company and one that merely survives isn't solely based on the intellectual prowess of its leadership, but hinges significantly on its overall health. The vitality of an organization, characterized by a strong, cohesive leadership team, clear communication of values, and alignment around common goals, becomes its ultimate competitive edge. The journey towards organizational health begins with the leadership's deliberate effort to define what the company stands for, its core purpose, and how it chooses to navigate the challenges of its environment. This clarity around values and priorities is not just an internal guiding light, but also a beacon that draws in success, innovation, and resilience. Leaders play a pivotal role in this transformation serving not as distant strategists, but as active, engaged architects of the company's culture and ethos. Through their actions, commitment, and the example they set, leaders can inspire a wave of positive change that permeates every level of the organization. In essence, the secret to unlocking a company's full potential lies not in the brilliance of its strategy or the depth of its market penetration, but in the health, unity, and purpose shared by its people. As companies navigate the complexities of the modern business world, 
those that prioritize organizational health stand tall, not just as market leaders, but as exemplary stewards of a culture that champions success, collaboration, and well being. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.